Hello, you're joined today by competition winner Joe Sims and the Queen of Bristol and the most elegant woman in the world, Miss Jade Adams. You're not a competition winner. You got this part fair and square, Joe. Hanging out with you makes you feel like a competition winner, mate. That is lovely. Ari, over to you with the questions. The show is about a girl called Ruby who works in a call centre in Bristol and the show is about all of the people who decide not to run away to London to live their dreams and it's about a group of people who without each other would be very lonely but actually have a great time working in a call centre together and it all it was um, all inspired by my time at a call centre but what we discovered as a cast is every single person on the cast has worked in a call centre so we just it's our, it's our love letter to our pasts and also our, it's our love letter to all the people that stay at home and keep the lights on. No, babe. No, I didn't, no, I didn't think about this when I was at the call centre. I was 18. I was trying not to get sacked constantly. Um, I wasn't thinking. I didn't even know I'd be a comedian. I didn't become... I didn't win Funny Women until 2014, so I wasn't, you know, I didn't know any of this would happen. Were you not, were you not funny until 2014? Nah, I've been funny my whole life, mate. <laughs> but I just didn't know where to channel it, because when, um, when you don't have any family in this industry, you just don't know what this thing is that you can do. And then one day, I'm very lucky someone said, you're funny, you. And I went, oh, all right, then I'll go and do that. Do you know what, though? That Nepo baby thing, we'd have gone straight in to be a couple of supervisor as at Asda, though, wouldn't we? <laughs> both our mums work at Asda, we'd have been a shoe in there. Both our mothers work in Asda in Bristol and both our dads work at Airbus in Bristol. We lived around the corner from each other when we both lived in Walthamstow and Clapton, and he lives on my brother's road. I do indeed, but honestly, working in call centres, I, 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 I'm sure I dreaded it at the time, but I had the most fun and made so many brilliant friends because it, no two days were the same. There's a sense of camaraderie there, which I think was really embraced in Ruby speaking, and you can see it there. A bunch of disparate individuals, so whenever you're watching, you might be a little bit more of a Tom person, or you might be more of a Ruby person, but there is someone for everybody, like a Madonna album. <laughs> <laughs> took a call um, for Sherry Blair's assistant because I used to work for Sainsbury's to you and Sherry Blair's assistant phones up and she wanted a lot of cheese and nappies. I made, I, I made friends with a lady in the end uh, who, who was a, a, a racial from friends look-alike person uh, and, and, then, uh, and then one day I wanted to go in like Sarah, I wanted to go on a date um, but then I was told by my manager that I was overstepping and I wasn't allowed to go there. But she, we got on so well, you know, like you know, you're speaking, you hear those voices and then you're drawn to her. And then she went, oh, yeah, she was like, um, I, I, by, by day, I'm a Rachel from Friends lookalike person. You're like, who doesn't love Jennifer Aniston? So I fell in love over the thing. I'd love to tell you, dear reader, that we're still together, but I never met her. Uh, your missus is way better. Absolutely. Gwen, if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> I mean, he is unashamedly laddie, and he does teeter on the right, just on the right side of toxic masculinity. But like a lot of people, you know, he's a like he's a rough diamond. He's looking to be shaped, and he's going on a journey. Then he meets this kind of like you know this powerhouse of an individual, Ru Ruby, who doesn't march to the beat of anybody's drum, and it's intoxicating. And so Tom just like you know dives in with both feet and wants to see where it takes him. And it takes him quite a long way, but hopefully there's a series two because there's so much further for these two to go. Well, Bristol's the most important city on the planet. Did you know that America is named after the mayor of Bristol? Everyone thought it was Amerigo Vespucci, um, but that's not true at all. It was Richard Americk, who was the Lord Mayor of Bristol, that sent Giovanni Cabuti or John Cabot along his way and said, name everything you find. So Bristol, right, the mayor of Bristol is who America's named after. So this is how important a city it is. And how rare is it that you hear accents like ours on the telly box? Well, you do, but they're always fake ones. Fake ones. I get, I get accused of mine being fake. And on, honestly, if you met my dad, it's a Bristolian accent to die for. I haven't met your dad yet. Haven't you? No. I've met yours. Yeah, I know. You brought me around a Lamborghini. When he first came over my house, he called for me. 
properly cool for her old school and I bought a bottle of fizzy Lambrini, but she went in. She lied to me about when she was going to be home and her mum thought I was like some local nutcase. Oh, no, she didn't. She <laughs> thought you were the murderer from Broadchurch. So she opened the door and saw Nigel Carter at the door and she was like, oh? A bottle of Lambrini, mate. A bottle of Lambrini. That wasn't in a storyline. Anyway, we, we've only known one other since May, but we're very, very good friends and we live five minutes away. So we go for a lot of cider. A lot. Yeah, we fight and bicker all the way through it, but there is, there is, um, appreciate, we laugh with each other, we fight with each other. It's like how people are when they work so closely with each other. You spend more time with the people you work with in an office than you do with your own family. And, um, and they, you know, like you'll, you'll see on the show that we are, I mean, we get on really well with each other as well, but there is a sense of family amongst them all, which is, I suppose, what the message is of the show. At the crux of it, when I was working with Abby Wilson, uh, and we were going back and forth with, so we all, me, Abby and Lucy created it together. Me, Abby Wilson and Lucy Lumsden created it together and then Abby went off and wrote it. And when we were going back and forth, I said to her one day, I was like, I've only got one question, which is why? Why are we watching the show? What is it? What is the, we, comedy's fantastic, but what is the, 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 the sort of, what is the nugget there? And, and we all discussed that it was loneliness. And, and I think everyone has it felt a lot of isolation over the last few years and I hope that you find that Ruby speaking is the antidote to that. You will. I mean, we see on the news all the time all these bad news stories, and justifiably so. And what you need at the moment, what comedy needs, is a massive hug, that sense of community, that sense of togetherness. And that's what this call center provides. Honestly, like, get watching it, and it will be a lovely big hug in that telly box in the corner of your front room. The whole cast have just turned up here and we love each other so much. Come on in! Come, come in, in! Come in! Come in! Come in! Come in! Come! 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 Here they all are. Absolutely beautiful. We haven't seen them for weeks and that's what it feels like. That's the power of community. We love one another as much in real life as we do in this show. Get watching. 22nd of June, ITVX. 22nd of June! Love you!